Welcome to the Mount Pilgrim Missionary Baptist Church Network, where we are building faith and transforming life. Where our senior pastor is the Reverend James I. Perkins. Good evening, and welcome to our Bible study here at Mount Pilgrim Missionary Baptist Church, 539 Willow Street, Lenora, North Carolina. I am so glad that uh, you joined us, and I just want to take this time out to say thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule and joining us here for Bible study. And I pray that something that is said to you this evening will be a blessing to you for the rest of the week. And I hope that you have a good evening in Bible study. Without further ado, we welcome you into our Wednesday evening Bible study. The Feast of Books, I mean the Feast of Tabernacle. Okay, good the evening. The Feast of the Tabernacle. Yes. Good evening, everybody. We're going to go right into our, uh, into our Bible study. And I thank you so much for, for joining us and pray that, that God will see us through that. I got a little unique study today, reason I didn't send out anything. We're going to cover about one, two, three, four, five chapters. Uh... Don't, don't let me fool you. It ain't going to be the whole chapters. I think I've got one verse out of each chapter, but it's an interesting book, uh, Psalms, Psalms that, that we're going to be talking about here. Psalms 122 and Psalms 124 and Psalms 131 and Psalms 33 and also Psalms 127. And But let us pray before we go any further. God, we want to say thank you for another day and God, thank you for your blessings of your grace and your mercy. Thank you so much, Lord. And God, help us in our Bible study. And God, give us understanding and clarity. God, that this may be a stepping stone or a ladder to us being better Christian for you. God, bless our Bible study as we go through it. And bless those who have joined us. And bless those who have not. And God, all of these blessings we ask in thy son, Jesus Christ's name. And God's people said, amen, amen. My, my study, I, I do a devotion every morning, and, and that's my own personal thing that, that, that I like to do to, to get me started out. And my devotion time this morning was Psalms 121. And, and I get this through, I think it's through the internet or somewhere, it does a Bible devotion, and it gives you that in a week, at a week's time or uh, each day. So my Tuesday or my Wednesday was, Psalms 121. And what got me on this or caused me to go further, it said the a song of ascents. I don't know if your Bible says that or not in these Psalms, a song of ascents. And, and I knew that these were songs uh, 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 written and attributed to David. And one of them is to Solomon, but the others is an unknown. I don't know. But this Chapter 21, it says a song of ascents. And like I said, chapter 22 and chapter 24 and 31 and 33. Now, chapter 21 was not by David, but that's what, what my study was. I said that. But but songs of ascents is referring to the Israelites' journey during the three annual feasts that they attended. We're going to get to those annual feasts just here in a minute. And the songs of ascent was a song that, that reminded them of God's grace and reminded them of God's mercy. And it reminded them of God's prevention, pre, pre, provisions and reminded them of God's protection. And, and it also reminded them of God's salvation. And can you imagine, and, and all of these were, were men. Of course, we know that the Old Testament was written around men and women were not yet on the scene. And I'm not getting into that. That's a whole nother study. And I, I don't want to get into the, the, the women's situation there in the Old Testament, but these were men. And as they journeyed, apparently they were all together. Of course, not apparently, but yes, they were all together walking to these three different feasts that they were to attend. Wouldn't it be great if we had our people that was dedicated to Sunday school, that was dedicated to Bible study, that was dedicated to our revivals, or was dedicated to all the programs that happened in the church and 
we could come together, no matter if it's just men or if it's men and women, but the church could come together with songs of praise and songs of, uh, of thankfulness. Just, just come together knowing that we were going into a festival, knowing we were going into a time to worship when it comes to Sunday school and Bible study and, and, and revivals and, and whatever we have here at church. A lot of times we missing on the things that kept the Old Testament you know. saints, the Old Testament saints together. So we're somewhere, somehow, we got to get back to the to the to the togetherness and to the, the 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 group thing that that they did. But but that's a whole another lesson there. But I just think these were some of the songs and these were some of the words that these men as they journeyed to these three different feasts here and all the feasts, the three different feasts that we're going to be talking about is taken out of uh, the 16th chapter of Deuteronomy. Uh, number one, the first one that they attended was the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And we know what the Feast of Unleavened Bread is, is that when God began to speak to Pharaoh, Pharaoh was letting God's people leave out of Egypt. The bread that they had baked had not risen the bread that they took was unleavened, wasn't anything in it, and they were in a hurry. So they grabbed up the bread and whatever they could get in their efforts to leave Egypt. So I believe this is where the unleavened bread, the, the, the bread that we take, no nothing in it, no yeast, no salt, no pepper, no nothing there to represent our deliverance. Amen? That was uh, Deuteronomy 16, 1 through 8. That was the first uh, one of the three feasts that they attended, uh, these brothers, that as they journeyed on, they sung. And, and the Bible says that they sung these songs on their journey to these feasts. Can you about imagine how they felt when they got there? Can you about imagine coming into church with nothing but praising God on your lips? Can you imagine coming into church and the church is already on fire with praises to him from the people that, that are there? So let us just, uh, the other one was uh, the Feast of Weeks. So uh, who, who did I ask to look that up for me? What, what do we mean when we say the Feast of Weeks? Who did I give that to? The Feast of Weeks. Who did I give that to? Welcome to My One Number. If you are the host, press star now. Otherwise, please wait and you will be joined into the conference. Please announce yourself. We don't, we don't hang up and then try to call back in. No, you're good. You're good okay. now. You're good now. That, oh, that good. was me. you good. Okay. Yeah. The Feast oh, of Weeks. Thanks. What was the Feast of Weeks? Oh, gosh. Did, I, did it cut off? No, I'm here. I'm here. Let me see if I can pull it back up. Okay. Uh, who had the Feast of <laughs> Tabit or the Feast of Booths? I don't know, but I got the Feast of Weeks. Okay. Right. Sherry's going to call back in. Okay. Right. No, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, okay. I'm here. I had the uh, the feast of booths or tabernacles. Feast the tabernacle. Okay. What 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 does that mean, Sherry? What 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 did, what did uh when you Google that for me? Uh, it's um the feast of uh, tabernacle or I don't know Sukkot. S U K K O P is the third great annual pilgrimage festival when the Jewish people gathered together in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. not only to remember God's provision in the wilderness, but also to look ahead to that promised messianic age yeah. when all nations will flow to Jerusalem yeah. to worship the Lord. Yeah. Very good, very good. Now, can you imagine how that feast turned out 
with everybody coming in there praising the Lord. Can you about imagine how that would be? Uh, the Feast of Weeks, what was that feast, Minister Real? Um, it's the holiday celebrate the, the giving of the Torah on the Sermon of the Mount as mm -hmm. well as the harvest for the summer. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. The it's S H A V U O T was one of the three pilgrimage festivals in which all the Jewish men would go to Jerusalem and bring their first fruit as offerings to God. Mm -hmm. Very good. So can, uh -huh. so can you imagine that? Now, that was a good point there. They didn't just go. They bought a sacrifice. They bought uh -huh. something that would show God, I thank you for watching over me. Uh -huh. And not only thank you for watching over me, I'm bringing my first to you. And I think they did this with all, well, maybe not the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread when we celebrate. And, and that's what communion is, the celebration there of, of Jesus' broken body and, and his blood there. And the Feast of Weeks where the brothers went in and it said these were men. Of course, the women were not to participate in this, but the men gathered together and and they sang songs as they journeyed to the Feast of Weeks. And the same thing goes when they journeyed to the Feast of Tabernacles. So these three events or these three festivals is what we see here. And as the reason of songs of ascent, songs reminding the people, and I'm sure this is what they did as they sang, just like our old hymns in our hymn book. A lot of these hymns come from our Negroes that were in slavery. How they That was their way of worshiping and praising God. There was no books there for them to read out of because half of them couldn't read. But it came from the heart. It came from their soul as they sang these hymns. And, and a lot of the songs, the old Negro songs, were how they would communicate from one plantation to another, letting everybody know what Omasa was up to doing or what Omasa was about to do. So th there comes a time when we should not forget these old Negro hymns or, or these old hymns in a Bible. They had a reason for doing that, okay? So here, as I said earlier, uh, Psalms 121 was not one of the Psalms that David wrote, but it was the Psalms that was that I that was chosen from my devotion, where it says, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. Now when they talk about lifting their eyes to the hills, the temples were built on the hills. Or uh, 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 the fellowship halls were built on the hill. And when I think about, this is me now, when I'm thinking that they're saying I lift my eyes to the hills, I'm lifting my eyes to the tabernacle. I'm lifting my eyes to the temple. I'm lifting my eyes to the place where God resides, in our churches, in our temples, in our tabernacles, in our everywhere. And I'm thinking that this is what they meant when they said, I lift my eyes to the hill from which cometh my help. Because what? They are looking to God. They are looking to the place where God resides in those places that were built on a hill. And if you go back through the Bible, particularly in the Old Testament, you will find that these places were built on a hill. Maybe not so much a mountain, but they were built on a hill. From my help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. They were looking to God, or David said, we ought, now like I said, I don't know if David wrote that or not, I shouldn't say that, but the psalmist said that I will look to God, I will look to the hills, I will look in the tabernacles, I will look in the, in the temples, I will look to where God resides, because what there is where my help is at. Amen? This is, this is another part of the songs of ascent. Uh, all of these were recorded by David with an exception of Psalms 127, which I found out that was recorded by Solomon. Now, when we start with verse, I'm sorry, chapter 122, 
is what was written by David. Uh, and it means this, prayer for Jerusalem is what uh, 122 is going to tell us. Uh, chapter 124 is help comes from the Lord. Uh, chapter 127 is what Solomon wrote is uh, God's blessing on man's effort. Uh, chapter 131 is surrender as a child to the Lord. And chapter 133 praise a brotherly fellowship and a brotherly fellowship and uh, unity. Now, let's look at chapter 121. Chapter 121, as I said, is a praise to God, is a praise to the Lord. Now, this psalmist, as we find out through all of the psalmists, was praising God for their protection, praising God for his blessing, praising God for their provisions. A amen? Because they knew that wherever God was at, that God was watching over them at all times. And this is something that we can remember, Psalms 1, 121, is that God is continuously watching over me. No matter what my predicament, no matter what my situation, God is always there to watch over me. And sometimes we will need to ask ourselves some question, Lord, where are you at? But no matter how dark it gets, or no matter how bad it gets, God is always watching over us. He doesn't get tired. There's no tiredness in him, or does he get weary sometimes as we do, <laughs> amen? But God is always there for us. God is always on the job. He's never too busy to hear our prayer. He's never too busy to hear our complaints. He's never too busy to hear anything that we need to come to him with. And that is why that we praise him. That is why we worship him, because of the God that he is. He says here that I will lift up my eyes to the hills. And this was, as I said earlier, was a time that David was in battle. This was a time when David was going through the war, going through something here. And as David went into battle, and what we should do where you determine well, this is a this is a war or this is a battle for me. We need to learn how to trust in God and knowing that God is going to cover us wherever we're at, whatever that we're going through. Amen. Knowing that God is at the head of this battle that we're going through. And as I said, the, the, the battle is not ours. The battle belongs to God. God is a big enough God to just step right in and intercede that no matter what's going on and help us to get the victory. And when the victory comes, the victory pronouncing should not be to us. It should be to God. A amen. Solomon's temple was built on a hill. A amen. Uh, that was God's dwelling place. When he installed, when he installed uh, King David, it was there at the dwelling place of, of Solomon's temple when King David was installed as king. So here, Mount Moriah is one that we think of. The holy hill of Zion, that where all of this, as David said, is where God resides. It is here promised that if we put our trust in God and keep our duty, we shall be under his protection. That no matter where we're at, and this is to all of us, if you remain true to your assignment, if you remain true to your organization, if you remain true to your committee, not choosing when you want to attend, not choosing when you want to do, but remain faithful to what God or, or, or the preacher or the church has assigned to you. This is when we sure enough get our protection. This is what God blesses when we remain faithful to anything that we have our set our hands to do. It's not a good thing to drop out because you feel fit to do so. Some of these things, some of these dropouts, we ought to take it to God. God, please direct me as to what I need to do for this organization. God, please direct my hands. God, please direct my thoughts 
what I need to do. So all of our protection comes when we stay attached to whatever we have assigned our hands to do or whatever we have chosen to do for God. It's not a good thing to start something for God then fall off by the wayside because that's something you thought that you needed to do. God is not pleased with what we think because we are not ourselves anymore. We belong to God. Is that all right? Any questions or comments before I go on? All right, all right. Let's look at the uh, the second uh, uh, songs of ascent. Let's look at uh, chapter one twenty two, a chapter that 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 David wrote. And chapter twenty two says, "I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord.'" Oh, that's a good one there. That's a good one there. We ought to worship God in our own homes. You, you, you ought to have, and I've said this many times, that we ought to have a, a, a prayer closet. We ought to have a place where you can go and nobody's there but you. You, you, you need on your job, wherever you go, if it's outside, just take your walk on your break or at your lunch time. Just find you a place or find you a time to, to, to worship God. But just worshiping God at home or worshiping God in that designated place on the job or wherever you're at is not good enough. That, that, that's not enough. I think that we need to understand that God deserves more. Well, you know, people say, well, you know, I can worship at home. That ain't enough. That ain't good enough because the word of God doesn't tell us to worship at home. It tells us fret not to assemble ourselves together where? In the house of the Lord. We must, and I'm saying this, we must enter into the house of the Lord for praise and worship. Amen? This is where we pay our homage to God. This is where we show that I'm not ashamed of the God that I serve. I'm not ashamed of the God that I worship. This is where I said we pay homage. And the word of God says, and not forsake the assembling of ourselves together in the uh, place of God, in the church, is where we need to come and worship. So stop making excuses. Well, I can worship at home. Yeah, you can, but that's not good enough. The word of God said, fret not to assemble thyself together in the house of worship, assembling together with other Christians and brothers, worshiping and praising God together with other Christians, sisters and brothers. That's why David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. No matter what you come here for, even if it's just choir rehearsal, or even it's just coming here for a meeting, now not counting worship service on Sunday morning, we ought to be glad just to be in the house of God. This is what David was so, so proud of, not forsaking ourselves for the worship of God. We should not only agree this is what it is. And, and you know what our problem is in our churches? You know what our problem We're here. We got all types of people that come into church. And there's none that, that we can run away. There's none that we can ignore. We have to accept any and everybody that has assembled in the house of God. Because this is not our house. This house belongs to God. But we ought to at least say you ought to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior so that you can come together and worship. And when we, the Bible says, nothing happened in the books of Acts until what? They got on one accord. When we all come together as Christians, now I mean as Christians, then we can agree because we got the same commander-in-chief, Jesus Christ. He is sharing with us how we need to lead in the church. That's another thing. We got so many unsaved people in our organization and leading to where it brings about confusion, to where it brings about the committee just falling by the wayside. Why? Because folks that are leading us are not saved. 
That the first thing that will wise church in such a disarray because we got ungodly people leading and making decisions. And I say that people don't come to Bible study, but they're leading, making decisions in the church. They don't come to Sunday school, making decisions in the church. You never see them at any church function, but making decisions in the church. You never see them at revival, but making decisions in the church. The Bible says in Acts, the Holy Ghost didn't show up until they got on one accord. Ain't nothing going to happen on one accord when we got people unsaved leading the church. Mm. I said it, and it took me a long time to get that out. But but that's the truth. That's what we, and, and you know who's going to be held accountable to us, to that? We are, because we allow it to happen. Oh, yeah, I'm there as a pastor, and I need to address these things. But you, as members, need to speak up as well, you know? So we should not only agree with one another, but we ought to be excited and stir up one another to go to worship. That's what it is. We need to be so excited about a Bible study, about prayer meeting, that in our committees, we ought to stir people up and say, will you, will, will you come to Bible, will you attend Bible study? Or, or I'd love to see you in Sunday school. Or I'd love to see you at revival. This is where the problem is at, guys. God is not going to bless us halfway. If we can't give God 100%, then God ain't pleased with 75 or 80 or, or 85. When we do this, when we accept the whole of God, we can stir others up. But if you are not committed, if you are not dedicated, if you are not faithful to your organization, then how in the world are we going to stir anybody else up? And, and this should be public, to, to go to each other, live, and, and to go to worship God. And let everybody that is here know that I'm committed to God. The Word of God says any man that puts his hand to the plow, accepts Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and looks back, he said, heaven is not for you. He said he is not fit for the kingdom of heaven. So when you fall by the wayside, when you quit attending, when you quit doing, you have let God down. You haven't let pastor down because I don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. But David said, if David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We ought to be glad to attend Bible study without any excuses. We ought to be glad Oh, it's Sunday morning. Let me get up. I got to get to Sunday school. I was glad when they said unto me, oh, it's my, it's my uh, men's ministry meeting. Oh, let me go. I was glad. Uh-oh, it's choir rehearsal, 7 o'clock. Uh-oh, let me go. Let me go. The, David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We are to live for God's cause, not your cause, not what you want to do, that's why we're glad, because what? We are living for God's cause, and to obey, and to read, to learn, to live, and to die for the cause of God. How many of us are willing to die for the cause of God? You got to be committed to him. You got to know the word of God. Now, he does not expect for us to be perfect, but expects for us to be faithful. Why can't we be faithful to the church that you have chosen to say, this is my home church, or this is my church, or this is my pastor. Why can't you be faithful to what the church represents? Amen. We ought to love the word of God. This is where we get progress. This is where we move. This is where we build from loving the word of God. Then we labor for it. No matter what happens, I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. I'm going to be committed. I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to labor for my committee. I'm going to be, I'm going to labor for my organization. I'm going to do whatever it takes for me to make my organization grow or for me to make my committee or my committee better. Then we can see it's good. There's no good 
if there's no labor, there's no good. If there's no commitment, there's no good if you are not faithful. We've got to seek good in everything that we do. Then, then. And, and define good. Define good. Define what, what uh, to seek good. Good. To, 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 seek, to seek good is to seek God's will or to seek yes. the, 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 whatever the bylaws are, Salvation. whatever the guidelines yes, are. The yeah. Love of God. Yeah. Oh, I thought seek you were talking the about the committee. If they, don't, if they don't have that love for God, if a person doesn't have that love for God, then he can't be committed to God. That's right. I agree with so you. So he doesn't have the power in them to want to be a member and want to be faithful I agree. and want to surrender to God. So, you know, what do you do in a church when you have people that just come because that's what they used to doing but are not making a commitment to God, you know, to to do his will yeah. or have his will to be done in their life. Yeah. Yeah. How do you you know and something and you just can't do it because it's tradition. Tradition. There you go. Yeah. That's exactly right. And, and you know what? We have fallen for that okie doke. Because well you know my mama was here. My grandpa was here and, and my this that ain't got nothing to do with your salvation. God is looking for you to make a commitment. Mm -hmm. And and Minister Ray, you asked, mm -hmm. what can you do? Well, what 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 can you do? The old people would put them out of the church <laughs> back in the old and listen, if you and, and that's only fair. If you cannot be committed to it, then why do it? If you can't be committed to God, why you want to come up here and impress me or the people with a few <laughs> words? You, you know, th th that it's got to come from that individual. That person has to, yeah, yeah, that's what we got to do. And and peep, the Bible said, well, the Bible, did I read this in the Bible? People beget people. We've got to let folks know, well, listen, you, you ought to start coming to Bible study. If you're going to be in this group, we want to make a bylaws, a guideline. If you're going to be in this group, you got to attend Bible study. you got to attend Sunday school. That would cut the limit down a whole lot right there. That would cut the five or six down to maybe two or three. And people say, well, Pastor, you can't make me. No, I'm not making you. I'm not making you. If you can't be committed to what you're doing, then that's showing that you're less than a man or a woman. If you can't be committed to it, I got a comment. Well, the thing, the Go ahead. Go ahead, whoever. Go ahead. Speaking on fellowship, Sister Kay said fellowship is the key to help help. Grow in faith, because iron sharpens iron. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. Yeah, fellowship brings faith. Faith brings fellowship. Like the like the caller said, that iron sharpens out. We are each other's uh, helper. We ought to be able to help one another along the way. And and I know there's some folks that you just can't talk to, some folks that you just can't say nothing to. But listen, if you're not doing it then how are you going to tell somebody else to do it? Amen. Any more questions comments? Thank you, guys. Just in case that we need to pray and a, a, for the text. A lot of people. Go ahead. Go ahead on the phone. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. A Ray. lot of people think, think that the, their, their work are going to save them. Well. You know, but it, it's not the work. I mean, you know, it's sometimes the work they just in vain, you know. Yeah. And I don't know. Well, you we know, we've got the. I'm thinking about, you know, what can we do well, to draw? What the word says, if he be lifted up. Yeah, that's what they draw. Absolutely. He has to do yeah. He has to do the drawing. So I guess the work of, of the church is to not allow those that don't confess, confess salvation mm -hmm. to, to hold offices or be over nothing. They should not you be. You know, and just let them just come. Yeah, yeah. You know, and just come. Yeah. You, you know, in, in of the old churches, in the Bible or wherever, if you, the church is built up 
through Christians. Christian yeah. being saved. That's what the church was in the olden days. A a amen. And um, maybe we need to go back and, well, I don't know. We just need to pray. We just need to pray. We got a lot of people that's in leadership yeah, role. Yeah, because church is for people, for all of us, yeah. saved, unsaved. Right. You know, yeah. Still, yeah. even though we say we still got to grow yeah. in the yeah. Lord. And that's where the commitment and the uh, faithfulness and all that comes in. Great. When I you're, agree. you know, you saved or when you've given your life to Christ, you've been born again. Your heart's been changed. That's right. That's but, right. We, you know, we have to, I mean, they, people are going to come to hear the word and hope prayerfully, like you said, we just have to start praying. We just that have God to pray. God will anoint the word through his minister, through, the, through you, you know, our pastor. And, yeah. And whoever, all the Christians, just anoint his word to draw them yeah. to, to Christ so we can uplift his name with power. Amen. And the anointing. Amen. Amen. Do you have a comment? I got another comment. Uh, Sister Kay said we need to pray for them and teach them. And most important, and love people. And stop judging people. Let God change them. <laughs> you hear that? The sister said we need to preach to them. I mean, teach them. And preach the word. Yeah. And we can't be judges. And yeah. we can't we can't judge another person. We've got to just to preach them and let God do the changing. So mm -hmm. there's where yeah, we're at. We Absolutely. And, uh, just, you know. Yep. But we, you can not, you don't have to put them in offices. I agree. I agree. Know, yeah. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, let's move on to chapter Psalms 124. Is another song of ascents that was a contrib attributed to to David. Psalms 124. Psalms 124 says, "If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, how many of us, how many times have we said that? Let Israel now say so. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, and I'm sure, like I said, this was David." As he was going into war, and I believe this was afterwards, God was with him all through it, a human being in the presence of God. That's what David felt, that we are, no matter where we're at, we ought to accept and we ought to acknowledge. And we ought to ask God to, to go with us, to, to, to be with us, no matter what the situation. And, you know, and the mutual coming of the king of glory will be there if we... Go with God as God been present in whatever we're doing and we're following his lead. We are doing what it is that God has told us to do. Then we can be like David. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, if I had not sought out God during my sickness or during my trials or, or during some of those years when, when we were lost out there and even after we got saved, if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Amen. And here is God always with those who seek his presence. Now, did you notice that? Who seek the presence of God. God ain't just going to invite himself. We've got to know that I can make it through this with God. I can get through this with God, but I can't go it on my own. We can make it through a bad situation if it had not been for the Lord. But we've got to allow, we've got to, we've got to seek God's presence in all that we do. Seek God's face. Amen. We ourselves, here again, we are not our own. That's why I say when folks make the decision about what they're going to do, they have forgotten that we are not our own. When we accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, we become his, and we need to be controlled by him. We need to seek his will. We need to seek his body. Our bodies, our souls are not ours. We belong to God now. He is the, 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 the CEO. He is the commander-in-chief of our bodies. 
He is everything to us. This is how we get through some things. This is how we are able to overcome. And this is how David has made it to this point because he went in it with the Lord on his side. Amen. The Bible says the earth and all that dwells therein belongs to God. The earth and the fullness thereof belongs to God. Amen. Any question or comment? If it had not been for the Lord on my side. Any question or comments? Have you ever said that? How many times have we been in a mess <laughs> and God brought us out of it? And we often say, man, I'm telling you, if it had not been for the Lord, the church, we can say this, with all of the accomplishments, all the things that we, are, we were able or still able to do, if it had not been for the Lord on Mount Pilgrim's side, where would we be? Over these, what, 120 some years, if it had not been for the Lord, on our side, wherever we be. Amen? Amen. Okay. Uh, uh, let me see. Where was I at? Let's go to uh, let's go to, to Solomon. Solomon's 127. Psalms 127. Uh, commentary says that Solomon was a writer of Psalms 127. Let's go to that. Psalms 127. Okay. Psalms 127 says, unless the Lord builds the house. Mm -mm -mm. Isn't that something? Unless God is in the picture. Amen. Unless the Lord builds the house, the labor in vain who build it. They labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. In other words, if God is not in the beginning, Everything that we do is in vain. Is that all right? The, the, the Bible, or 127 tells us that all of our great achievements are ultimately worthless. Everything that we do is worthless unless, unless the Lord is doing it. The Lord is building it. The Lord is making a way. The Lord we put in front. Whatever you do, we ought to give thanks to God. Whatever you get, you ought to say, thank you, Lord. Whatever your achievements are, you ought to give God the praise. If you've made it these 70, 80, 90, 100 years, you ought to be somewhere. If you can't get out of your bed, you ought to be somewhere giving God the praise. If God has blessed you through some sicknesses, through some trials, and through a lot of temptations, we ought to be there giving God some praise. If God, unless the Lord builds it, unless God does it, everything that we do is in vain. Amen? Watching and writing his story through all that we do. Look at God. Look at God. Through all that we do. You know what? We all got a story to tell. Do we not? We all have got a testimony because through it all, we've learned to trust in God. Uh, Psalms 127 tells us, tells Israel to remember that it was God who saved their city from enemies. God given everything, a value, safety, houses, food, children, everything that we got comes from God. Everything that we are, and oftentimes, and even now, with Israel going through something, even now with all of the war going on there, even, and, and you know about that, let, let me just say this. Israel is in a war, and Gaza, I believe, now this is me, of course I've heard this, that Gaza is in between Israel and Hamas, and Hamas is using Gaza as human shields against Israel, and, and, and there you got Palestine, and this started more years than, than what we can think about, so all of this, and we got to be careful with what we are doing there to Israel. Because God is right in the midst of all of that. And that lets us know, as I said, uh, I think Sunday, that sometimes there's trouble in our blessings. If just because we are serving him does not mean that we're got, we got going to go through something. We're all going to face some trouble, some trials somewhere. 
but we just got to maintain our faith and keep trusting in God. Any questions or comments on what Solomon wrote here? Uh, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Any questions or comments? Okay, where, where did I stop? Oh, did I do Did I do Psalms twenty four? I did. Okay, let's go back. Let's let's jump on Psalms one thirty one. Let's jump on Psalms one thirty one right quick. Lord, my heart is not haughty. Meaning what? My heart that I'm not arrogant. Mm -hmm. Nor my eyes lofty. Meaning what? That I'm not acting in a superior mode here. Neither do I concern myself with great matters, nor with things too profound, or maybe nor through things that's too difficult for me. Here again, here again, David is expressing that his heart is not proud. Oh my God, it, isn't, it, it, isn't, it, isn't, it, isn't it awful? Or isn't it, don't you just hate to look at folks that are always bragging? Look what I got. Look who I am. Who cares? Who cares? What you got, you ought to be just, just be thankful. You don't have to brag about it. Just be thankful. Tell God, thank you. You don't have to tell me about it. Just say, God, thank you for your blessing. A amen. Uh, uh, we ought to be other people that's not seeking some self-importance. To, to want to make yourself important in Mount Pilgrim. To make yourself important to, in St. Paul. To make yourself important to Life Center. Just be who you are. Let us just be a servant of the Most High. I don't need for my name to be mentioned. I don't need to be all of this. Just be a servant. And, and, and one thing that, that I thought about, uh, about the humility that we must show. Jesus showed humility. You know how he did that? when he bowed down when the disciples were there. And here is the God of God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lord washing the disciples' feet. And you know what he did afterwards? Didn't look, expect no accolades. Didn't expect for no hand clauses. The Bible says that he just got up, put his coat back on, and returned to the place where he was at. Not looking for nothing not looking for nobody to say, man, this, and, 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 and girl, you did this. No, you don't have to be thanked for everything that you do at Mount Pilgrim. Just do it because you love the Lord. Just do it because your heart has changed. There's some folks, that, if you don't call their name, if you don't recognize them, pastor, you didn't say nothing about what I did. Oh, I forgot about it. <laughs> I, I forgot, but 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 some folks that you just got to remember, seeking self-importance, but Jesus humbled himself to the call of the Lord on his life. That's what David did. David began to humble himself because God had called him to a purpose. That's where we at. When when we humble ourselves, when we seek God, when we know that the Lord. Lord, my heart is not haughty, my eyes are not lost, neither do I concern myself with great matters, nor with things too difficult for me to do. When I forget about me, and I forget about somebody bragging on me, then it makes my job worth it. You remember that last scripture? Remember that last scripture? Or, or if, if God doesn't build the house, if God doesn't do it, Everything you do is in vain. If you are not serving and praying, if you are not preaching to glorify God, your preaching is in vain. If you are doing it just to impress the, the congregation, then your doing is in vain. If every time you stand up and talk and you waiting on an amen or you waiting on somebody, your preaching, your talking is in vain. Does that make sense, y'all? Is anybody, anybody got anything to say? Now, Jesus, here we go building the house. Jesus provides us with that humility. That's when you get it, when you get saved, and you're really giving God your all. That's where humility comes in. That's when you show the true Christian. That's when you show the true 
love of God. When it came to God, David had a Christ-like trust. His hope was in the Lord. Children trust in us. Children's hope is in us. Children are looking for us to provide. That's how David served the Lord. And that's how we need to serve the Lord, is come before God with a childlike attitude. Everything that I am, everything that I got comes from the Lord. Any questions, any comments? Okay, let's go to the very last one of David's uh, Song of Ascent, uh, Psalms 133. Psalms 130. Now, Psalms 134 says a song of ascent, but that is from an unknown writer. David did not pen that. But look at what David said in Psalms 133. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for a brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. Here we find people expressing their joy in song and, and coming together to worship at the temple. This is what we should feel like on Sunday morning. This is what we should feel like at Sunday school. This is what we should feel like even on our telephones or, or Facebook. This is what we should feel like, how good and how pleasant it is. The pleasant comes from your humility. The pleasant that, that, that you project is that your salvation is that your change of heart. When that is where your pleasantry comes in, at, when you are pleasant to be around, when you are pleasant to, to fellowship with, when you're not always complaining, when you're not always, oh, woe is me. You, you know, don't you just hate people that's always complaining and always got something going on in them and they always sick? Sometimes you ought to be well. Sometimes everybody ain't sick all the time. There ought to be some good days in your life if, if you're saved. <laughs> Amen. Temple where God promised, God promised to meet us there in the temple, in the church. Amen. This psalm imparts blessings and life to God's people. The joy of fellowship marked by his unity cannot, we can't oversay that enough. When we fellowship and we are joined here by God and his spirit, we just can't, we just can't say fellowship enough. It's good. When, when we fellowship with one another. And, and there's nothing no better. Church is good. We are listening tentatively to the word of God. And you're praising God. But, but isn't it good after church when you can fellowship with the sisters and brothers? You can talk and we can have fun and we can laugh. Hadn't seen each other in, in a week. And where you been? How you been? To me, that's good fellowship. A a amen? Amen. Anointing with all is a symbolic of God's protection, and I use that every Sunday. So remember that to those of you, pastors, preachers, a anointed of all is a symbolic of God's protection. David's reference, the priestly anointed of Aaron, in particular, this ties the concept of brotherly love and unity to our spiritual role. So there's, there's, there's a reason for everything in the church. There's a reason for what we do, and we ought to make it our business before you engage in it or, or after you didn't have the time. Find out what's the reason for that. What's the purpose for that? So here we find what the ascent of David was, and we understand David's dilemma, and we all understand why David asked God to create in him a clean heart and upright spirit. David needed that, and so do we every now and then. Okay, any questions or comments? Sister K, you got in big letters, fellowship. And also, <laughs> what the word says, we're one or two are gathered together. Absolutely. Absolutely. Isn't that, isn't that good news? And there's nothing wrong with good fellowship and enjoying Jesus together. Good fellowship and praising him. It ought to be like a domino effect. One stand up to praise God, somebody else ought to remember you know, God did this for me. Sometimes we need to, that, that, that memory of your past, every now and then you ought to remember where God brought you from and praise God for where you are now. 
Okay. Any more questions or comments? Thank you guys for your comments and thank you for your presence. And I thank God for all those of join us on Facebook. I hear you speaking back to me. I receive your, your text messages and I thank you so very much. And some people, well, Pastor, I would ask. No, go ahead and ask anyway. Go ahead and ask the question anyway. There ain't no dumb questions. There ain't no dumb comments. You just praising God. Okay? So, let us join in in, in our Bible study in any way that, that God leads you to do. Any more questions or comments? Anybody else? Are there any prayer requests this evening? Any prayer requests? Any, any? Yes, would you pray for Angela Harrell? Angela Harrell, okay. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Are there any more? In the world. Any more prayer requests? Okay, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, help us to pray. Lord, we just come to you right now. God, as we just studied in your word, that humility gets your attention. So God, I pray right now that you will humble our hard hearts, humble our proud look, humble our desire to be important, humble us, God, to, to where you can use us, and humble us, God, to the point that what we are doing and what we are saying will glorify you and will honor you and, and that that your word will be a benefit through us maybe to somebody else so god i pray that you will make us what you will have us to be help us to be like david created me god a clean heart created me a heart of love and a heart of giving and and a heart of perseverance god created me that that i need that one day I will make heaven my home. That one day, even while I'm here, God, that your name can be glorified. That your name can be honored. God, help me to some way be that light in a dark world where somebody that's going through something can see God in us. So God, help us to let our little light shine. Help us, God, to be the people that you will come back looking for. Help us to be the people that will draw other people. As somebody said, that iron sharpens iron. That we are the church. That we are the people that, that you are coming back looking for. So God, help us to be that that you will have us to be. Now God, there's a lot of sick in our community. A lot of sick in our families. And God, you already know about it. So in the name of Jesus, we just lift them up to you. And God, we just ask that the anointing, whatever, wherever is needed, that the anointing will be upon them right now. And God, whatever we are going through, God, I plead the blood of Jesus right now. God, I plead the blood of Jesus over against the enemy. God, I plead the blood of Jesus against sickness. God, I plead the blood of Jesus against anything that Satan is trying to do, even to our young people. God, I pray right now that you'd bless Melanie right now. God, I pray that you'd bless her mama right now. God, I pray that you'd be with that child right now in a special way. And God, the young man that I just prayed for just the other day, God, I pray that you will lift him above, that you will lift him up. God, I pray that the Spirit of God will move through that young man right now, God, and let him know the condition he's in. He's not alone, that you said you'd be a very present help in the time of trouble. You said that you'd never leave us, neither would you forsake us. You said once I was young and now I'm old, you said you have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor I see begging bread. God, you promised us, and God, you have helped stay true to your word. And God, I just want to thank you for being just who you said that you are. Now, God, just be with us. Help us in our Bible studies. Help us in our Sunday school. God, I pray that you would put Sunday school on the hearts of Christians. Put Sunday school on the hearts of, of Mount Pilgrim members. Put Bible study on their hearts. And God, let us be about lifting your name 
It ain't about Perkins. It ain't about nobody, but God is all about you. God let us come together. The Bible just said, oh, how good it is for brothers to fellowship in unity. How good it is for Mount Pilgrim to come together in unity. So God, we ask right now that you would bring us together that you would allow your spirit to touch every soul, every mind, every body. And God, that we will be on one accord for you. God, we just want to say we love you and we thank you. Now, God, go with us in our homes. Bless our homes. Bless our undertakings. God, we pray that you'd always bless us in our traveling and go with us in everything that we do. God bless Mount Pilgrim in a special way. And God, we just want to say thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. Beside thee, there is no other God. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray. And all of God's people said, amen. Amen. And don't forget our podcast, y'all. Thank y'all for considering us. And thank you for your donations. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. And continue to uh, celebrate and honor our veterans. Uh, this Swinney, that's a... Uh, the 12th, the 12th of this month is Veterans Day. Please just don't forget to honor our veterans. Friends and family on the 18th. Oh, yeah, and don't forget about our friends and our family on the 18th of this month. So if you have any kinfolk, them good ones, them, them bad ones, them ones you don't want to see, them ones that you love to see, invite them to Family and Friend Day on the 18th. Saturday, we're going to have the, the, the feeding, the, the eating, and all that, and Sunday, we will have uh, preaching from that powerful preacher of Mount Pilgrim Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you, guys. Also, Thanksgiving dinner, 18th at Martin Luther King. Okay, and the Thanksgiving dinner is also the 18th at Martin Luther King. Also, on the 21st is, is the turkey drive. So if you're willing to donate a turkey, we would very much appreciate it, Chris and I. So a lot of good things are going on back to back, but... Uh, We'll try to make what we can and when we can. So don't forget the, the 18th is family and friend starting at 2 o'clock. Uh, the Thanksgiving dinner up at the rec starts at 1 o'clock, 12.30, 1 o'clock. On the 21st, we will have the turkey drive. So a lot of good things that, that are going on. So just pray for us that we will be found doing what God has said for us to do. May God bless you, and I pray that you'd have a good night. Good night, everybody. Come on, here, back, pretend together like this. That's it. We're going to have good old church. Can I hear a little good time? A little good time, please. Come on.